Um, but a lot of times when you start looking into it, um, it's difficult. And at some point, you got to make this a wonder if they did. Wonder if they did, you know. That, that and if they the did, at what point do you go, okay, how do we tackle this? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the thing is, and the thing that's frustrating is that for people on the left, and yeah. for me, it's like there, there's so many egregious wrongs, and there's so many things that we have been lying to about sure. for so many years. So the fact that people now associate what happened with 9-11 with this larger conspiracy may just be a function of that paranoia. To me, I haven't, I haven't heard anything truly compelling to, to prove that this was an intentional act that the United States government inflicted in order to justify have you, have you looked into it? I've looked into it vaguely, but not, not in, in depth. And it's not something that, for me, the priority should not be whether or not the United States government sort of you know, the Bush administration, whoever decided to sort of engineer this, but the impulse that sort of the, the political impulse of what happened before 9-11, every, every decision the United States government has made up to 9-11 and following 9-11 is part of this larger strategy and, and United States military, um, United States sort of, I, I, it's part of a larger geopolitical set of decisions that we've made. To me, the important thing is questioning those assumptions, the globalization assumptions, the fact that we, we prop up third world regimes, you know, all of those things. To me, those are the questions and those are the things that we should be focusing on. If we think... focus only on the 9-11 stuff, then suddenly you've moved that whole anti-globalization movement, the whole, you know, all, all of that, that leftist energy that was in tackling the larger problem, which is all the United States. U.S.'s policies abroad, basically. And if, if you sort of shift to, okay, we have to prove that 9-11 was this inside conspiracy job that the United States government pulled, you're, you're losing your focus. And so for us, I think five years later, we have an article on this issue written by one of our longtime writers who sort of who talks about the legacy of 9-11 and where we are. And I think the importance for me is focusing on what, sort of how do we stop the United States and like, but if it's it, larger but policy do you think do you think if they prove the United States did it and then based two wars on it or the, or members of it you don't think do you think that would stop I think you, that, uh, some I think people that get involved now do it as an opportunity from the left yeah, they I see it as an opportunity that they almost they played their hand like so egregiously mm -hmm. um, you know and so arrogantly case to make and I yeah. think what it does is it isolates a lot of people on the left who would be sympathetic who then have glommed on to this idea that it, it's it's a conspiracy it will they'll never prove it it'll be like the JFK thing there'll be lingering questions people will be proliferating things on the internet it will never irrefutably be proved and it will it will continue to isolate whatever movement is is, is genuine and it's it's progressive sort of attempts to change things. So right. ev everybody who gets associated with that will suddenly be written off as a, a wacko. And I think the reason we haven't... But do you think the, the, the media is labeling as wacko? I it, think is what keeps the left away from it? I mean, degree, legitimate yeah. the, you know, the legitimate left and the not so legitimate well, I left? I mean, we've got William Pepper, you know, represent Martin Luther King Jr. and her family. Um, I mean, we've got some very old school left um, involved. Ralph Sherman was with che, you know, che Guarva and has worked with uh, you know, going against, I mean, these are, these are old school left that are now involved in it. Yeah. And this is, very, this is you know, more recent, so and I think it's something we're going to have to work with at yeah, some point. I mean, it's, it's something possible, but uh, what I would hope is that we channel all of that energy into really asking fundamental institutional questions about how we change the United States policies abroad and larger policies like Globalization, right. the IMF, but don't you the think it, we would have that gap, that openness to change it, if it was proven? If it, I mean, but that's like that's like asking, you know, let's prove that it, the chances of ever being able to prove this. And this is the thing. I don't think, you know. Do you, do you think it's easier than trying to prove uh, globalization? I mean, the effects of globalization. No, I think it's a simple. It's a simple answer. I mean, that's obviously a conspiracy of people with money to abuse the world, take resources, put them under debt. But it's I mean, a, that's a, it's a very, that's obviously a conspiracy. It's a very complex set of things that's going on, and I, th I think that. I mean, globalization's complex, isn't it? Yeah, and that's the thing is like you have to get people to engage in the, the complexity of the issue because when you just tell people like, you know, it's it was an inside job, the United States engineered this. It's a very major thing that 
I, yeah. a simple, a simple-minded set of people can grab onto and decide that this is this is going to prove all of the things that they've believed from here. You know, every leftist thing that they've ever signed up for. Like suddenly, this will be the, the thing. And in my feeling is, we need to to not do that and really offer more complex ideas and solutions that will be engaged on. Uh, yeah, so anyway. Thank you so much. Yeah.